The 2019 BUHS number six annual meeting is now reconvened. Uh, please rise for the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please be seated. The town clerks of their respective towns and or their assistants will be appointed this evening as ballot tellers and vote counters uh, for the meeting. Captain Mark Anderson, Mark, please raise your hand, uh, of the Wyndham County Sheriff's Office is appointed to serve as Sergeant at Arms. Now by way of introduction tonight, I'd like to introduce Ricky Davidson, the chair of the Brattleboro Union High School Board, and he will introduce the board members. Mr. Davidson. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, so starting on my far right is Rick Mills from Dummerston. And then coming this way is Sean Murphy from Guilford. And then Ian Torrey from Brattleboro. Katie Everest from Brattleboro. Ann Beekman from Putney. Russ Janis from Brattleboro. Bob Woodworth from Brattleboro. And I'm Ricky Davidson, also from Brattleboro. Thank you. Superintendent Lyle Holliday, will, uh, would you please introduce the administration officials? Thank you. I'd like to introduce Wyndham Regional Career Center Director Raymond Dunn. Brattleboro Area Middle School Principal Keith Lyman. Brattleboro Union High School Principal Steve Perrin. Brattleboro Union High School Assistant Principal Mary Kaufman. And Brattleboro Union High School Assistant Principal Kate Margaitis. Also to my right is Business Manager Frank Rucker. And to my left is Barbara Nowakowski, Admin Assistant. Thank you. Unless there is an objection from the body, those members of the administration and officers who are not residents of the district may speak to the articles since their expertise would otherwise not be available. Seeing no objections, those members of the administration and officers who are not residents of the district may speak to the articles. Uh, members of the BUHS Swiss Exchange are out in the lobby selling refreshments. The bathroom is located uh, in the right rear of the gym through those doors by the exit. Additional introductions this evening. The microphone passer is Gabe French. Gabe, raise your hand. Sound system this evening is Wayne Warwick from Be Heard Productions, and we have BCTV production crews here recording and broadcasting the meeting. The meeting rules. Those persons desiring to participate in any district meeting held at the Brattleboro Union High School Gymnasium must enter the main entrance from the parking lot. All those desiring to vote must register with his or her clerk at the tables near the entrance. Upon registering, if found qualified, each voter will be given a colored card which is to be raised when the voter wishes to have his or her vote counted. All members must be seated in four reserved sections on the gymnasium floor or in the reserved sections of the bleachers. I think we can accommodate this, uh, this crowd in what we have, which is good. All other persons except police, fire officials, and technical staff shall be seated in the areas des designated for observers and visitors. Voting in all the matters shall be by voice, by division of the voters, or by paper ballot. A division shall be had at, in the discretion of the moderator or upon the demand of six or more voters. A vote by paper ballot shall be had upon a demand of seven or more voters. Voters who have spoken at least once on the question shall not again be entitled to the floor to the exclusion of another who has not yet spoken without the leave of the voters. To gain the floor, each speaker shall rise, address the chair, give his or her name, and town of residence. Please wait to speak until you have been passed the microphone. Debate shall be limited to five minutes per person speaking uh, for the first time on any article. Special committees of the voters may be established by the voters by their existence shall be continued only from year to year, July 1st through June 30th, unless renewed by the next annual town meeting and subsequent meetings thereafter. On the motion of any voter, any meeting may resolve into a committee of the whole on any pending question. All parliamentary procedures and rulings shall be governed by Robert's Rules of Order, current edition, except as modified by these rules as amended in Title 16 VSA Section 76J. Other reminders, my role as a moderator is to help you accomplish the business you intend to do. Please 
uh, raise your hand and ask questions if you don't understand what's happening or if you think what is happening is wrong for some reason or if you want to do something but you don't know how to proceed. Please tell me if you feel I'm ruling improperly. You have the right to challenge the moderator's rulings. We will now move to Article 1 to act on reports of the officers. Is there a motion on the floor? Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Article 1, I move that the reports of the district officers be accepted as printed. And that was uh, Rick Mills making the motion? Yes, sir. Is there a second on the motion? Second, sir. It's moved and seconded that the reports of the district officers be accepted as printed. Is there any discussion on the motion? Mr. DeGray. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, I know this is delving off into the future, um, but to, could you give uh, somebody talk about uh, what the process is going to look forward, moving forward with this auditor's report, which I am one of, uh, if there's going to be uh, a new election of auditors, are there going to be auditors? Uh, I'm not sure if it's germane, but it's, since it's under this question, I'm wondering what's going to happen moving forward with this report. Thank you. We'll allow the question. The administration is queried. So, specifically uh, regarding the, uh, the uh, Office of Auditor, um, that question, um, it is subject to uh, the, um, the new board as to uh, if they uh, continue with the tradition that has been in place. Um, the state law actually uh, was changed a few years ago that indicates that if a school district engages a CPA every year, which it's now actually a state law for all districts, uh, then the elected auditor position wasn't required. But there's certainly nothing that um, uh, prevents that from occurring. Any further discussion on the motion? Are you ready to call the question? All those in favor, and the motion again has been uh, moved and seconded that the reports of the district officers be accepted as printed. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it. You've passed Article 1. Article 2, we will have Superintendent Holliday come to the microphone for discussion in Article 2. I'd like to call for nominations for the position of moderator to serve for a period of one year or until the district is dissolved, whichever comes first. Are there nominations? I nominate Stephen Brown as moderator for a period of one year or until the district is dissolved, whichever comes first. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you. Are there any other nominations? Hearing none, I'd like to call for the vote. All in favor of Stephen Brown as moderator of BUH District Number 6 for a period of one year or until the district is dissolved, whichever comes first, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, nay? You've elected Stephen Brown to serve as your moderator. Thank you. Before we go to Article 3, I just wanted to uh, publicly thank uh, Tim Arsenal for the service he provided to this district over uh, 19 years. I also want to thank him for uh, the, assistance he, the assistance he provided me in getting ready for tonight's meeting. Uh, I look forward to the opportunity to serving this board uh, for however long it, it exists. Article 3, we'll now move to Article 4, I'm sorry, Article... Article 3, to elect by ballot a treasurer to serve for a period of one year or until the district is dissolved, whichever comes first. Uh, I understand Mr. Murphy has a motion. Yes, Mr. Moderator. I nominate Barbara Norakowski as clerk for a period of one year or until the district is dissolved, whichever comes first. Second. The motion's been seconded. 
It's been moved and seconded that uh, Barbara Nowakowski is clerk to serve for a period of one year or until the district is dissolved, whichever comes first. Are there any other nominations? Is there any discussion on the motion? All those in favor of nominating uh, or electing Barbara Nowakowski as clerk to serve for a period of one year or until the district is dissolved, whichever comes first, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, say nay. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it. The motion carries. Barbara Nowakowski has been uh, elected as clerk to serve for a period of one year or until the district is dissolved, whichever comes first. We'll move now to Article 4, to elect by ballot a treasurer to serve for a period of one year or until the district is dissolved, whichever comes first. I understand Mr. Janus has a motion. Yes, I do. <clears throat> I nominate Frank Rucker as treasurer to serve for a period of a year or until the district is dissolved, whichever comes first. Is there a second on the motion? Second. It's been moved and seconded to nominate Frank Rucker as treasurer to serve for a period of one year or until the district is dissolved, whichever comes first. Are there any other nominations? Is there any discussion on the motion? It's been moved and seconded to nominate Frank Rucker as treasurer to serve for a period of one year or until the district is dissolved, whichever comes first. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed, please say nay. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it. The motion carries. You've elected Frank Rucker as treasurer to serve for a period of one year or until the district is dissolved, whichever comes first. Article 5. To elect by ballot one auditor to serve for a period of one year or until the district is dissolved, whichever comes first. I understand Mr. Tory has a motion. Uh, I nominate Stephen Lemke as auditor to serve for a period of one year or until the district is dissolved, whichever comes first. Is there a second on the motion? Second. It's been moved and seconded to nominate Stephen Lemke as auditor to serve for a period of one year or until the district is dissolved, whichever comes first. Is there any discussion on the motion? In fact, I should also ask, are there any other nominations? No discussion on the motion? Are you ready to call the question? All those in favor of electing Stephen Lemke as auditor to serve for a period of one year or until the district is dissolved, whichever comes first, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, please say nay. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it. The motion carries. You've elected Stephen Lemke as auditor to serve for a period of one year or until the district is dissolved, whichever comes first. Article 6, to see what salaries Brattleboro Union High School District Number 6 will vote to pay its officers and directors. I understand Mr. Davidson has a motion. Yes, Mr. Moderator. I move that Brattleboro Union High School District Number 6 be authorized to issue vouchers for the payments of its officers and directors for the ensuing fiscal year in the following amounts. To its clerk, the sum of $200. To its directors, the sum of $2,000 each except that the chairman shall be paid an additional $1,000 for a total of $17,200. And I'd like to speak to the question. Is there a second on the motion? Second. It's been moved and seconded that the Brattleboro Union High School District Number 6 be authorized to issue vouchers for the payment of its officers and directors for the ensuing fiscal year in the following amounts. To its clerk, the sum of $200. To its directors, the sum of $2,000 each, except that the chairman shall be paid an additional $1,000 for a total of $17,200. Mr. Davidson. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I just wanted to be clear, um, if the district is dissolved at, on June 30th, as is potentially happening, this amount would be prorated. It would not be the entire year. It would be prorated for the three months in which these board, the board members serve until the end of June. And our quick math here was for $4,300 would be the total amount and the prorated amount if the board, when, when the board is dissolved. Any further discussion on the motion? Mr. DeGray. Ricky, did you, did you say if you're dissolved June 30th? Yes. If you're dissolved June 30th, the new budget takes effect July 1, so in essence, your salary is moot, which would be zero. 
That is true, Mr. DeGray, but um, just there has been a lot of questions in the community, so I just wanted to be clear about the fact that we, everybody understands that this would be a prorated amount for the, th the months until the end of June. Any further discussion on the motion? Are you ready to call the question? It's been moved and seconded that the Brederboro Union High School District Number 6 be authorized to issue vouchers for the payment of its officers and directors for the ensuing fiscal year and the following amounts. To its clerk, the sum of $200. To its directors, the sum of $2,000 each, except that the chairman shall be paid an additional $1,000 for a total of $17,200. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed, please say nay. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it. You've passed Article 6. Article 7, transacting any other business that may legally come before the meeting. Is there any business on the floor? Mr. DeGray. Uh, I was actually away last week, but I, I did follow what happened up here at the high school, and I have uh, real concerns about what happened and following up and what I've read in the paper. And uh, I don't know how often that the school is participating with the local authorities, the local police, the state police, Brattleboro Union Hosp or the, the hospital. Uh, I think the last time that I knew of there was a, a huge drill here, actually the kids were on vacation, and I think I was on the select board, and it might have been around 2009, 2010, so don't hold me to that date. Um, and also, th there seem to have been a lot of questions raised in terms of notification. Uh, so could you talk a little bit about what happened and what plans that the board might have uh, in terms of safety and then having drills to make sure that uh, there is preparedness uh, given the date of what happened down in Florida. Uh, sad to be bringing this up, but oh, no one is immune and uh, we need to make sure that uh, we keep that in our forethoughts that uh, just because we're here in Brattleboro, Vermont, and what happened last week is a scary thought to a lot of people. So I would appreciate hearing from the administration and the board on this issue. Thank you. The administration and the board has been queried. I'll start by saying that as an administrative team, we meet approximately every other month with first responders. We have a very complete plan in place that we review um, and about once a year we do what is called a tabletop exercise so that uh, we are given different scenarios and um, we need to work with our first responders. Um, when I say first responders, I am talking about the hospital, rescue, Brattleboro Police, State Police, um, the Wyndham County Sheriff's Department, uh, did I say rescue? So um, Red Cross is involved in that as well. Um, I will let the board or the administration talk about the more recent events. And I'll, and I'll just say from a board's perspective. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I'll just say from a board's perspective, we are regularly re reported to about the drills and the procedures and things that are going on in place so that we know that the administration is doing their due diligence to be as prepared as possible and with the first responders and those, communi those communications. So we're aware of that as it's happening. So those, are, those things are happening. But I'll let the administration talk about this, any specifics related to last week. Mr. Perrin. Okay. So we, as Lyle and Ricky have pointed out, we do have a long history of, of doing drills, being prepared. Um, we have a pretty well articulated plan that is in place, um, an emergency preparedness plan. That includes evacuation plans as well as reunification plans with families. And so they've spoken to that, so I won't any further. Um, in terms of, of the events of last week, you know, we were given word uh, late one night that there had been uh, a threat made in one of our classrooms that had been reported to parents 
those parents correctly uh, followed what we've always said is see something, say something. They then turn, in turn reported that to the Brattleboro Police Department. The police department did their due diligence. They followed their procedures when evaluating this kind of event. They ensured that the student was safe. They ensured that the community was safe in terms of this student. We then, early the next morning, coordinated a response with members of the Brattleboro Police Department. One of the things that we've learned from past incidents here and also from national incidents is it's critical that law enforcement and school officials deliver one consistent, complete message. So we made sure that between myself, Superintendent Holliday, and members of the Brattleboro Police Department, that we had a complete investigation done both by the school and also by the police department. And then we issued a statement that was a joint statement. If you look at the statement that I provided to parents and families, and you look at the statement that the Brattleboro Police Department put out, they're, in the beginning, almost identical. That is by design, because we do not want to have a situation where a law enforcement agency is giving a message and then we give a contradictory message. So we wanted to make sure that was done well and done correctly, and it was. Um, in terms of, of how that process was then followed up, we have board policies in place where, uh, and I would direct you to board policy F24A specifically, that has provisions for how the school board administration respond to anybody making a threat to disrupt the school. I think that's, Mr. DeGray, did I miss anything? Uh, no, I was just, uh, when is the last time the policy was revisited? I do not know that. Mr. DeGray. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Only because I, I don't. Only because I don't see any other uh, people jumping up. So <laughs> I got here early, so I could get a seat too. Um, one thing I would say uh, in commenting on uh, the superintendent's comment, I think it's important to let the community know what you're doing here when you're just telling me all the activities that are going on in terms of preparedness and meetings. I think that's important to get out to the community so not that you can ever feel safe but it's it's nice to know that you are doing these things on a regular basis and if you don't know them then your people are going I wonder what they're doing I wonder what they're doing so better promotion of what you're doing to provide a safe environment up here goes bodes well for you as an organization and obviously as a, a school board thank you thank you any response from the administration yes um, we, we recognize. We, um, go ahead. We recognize you first. And All right. Then we'll go. Um, Thank you. We do have plans in place. We are pretty careful about giving out specifics to those plans because we don't want them used against us in any way. Um, if people want to do harm. All they need to do is look specifically at what we're doing with our students, where they're going, where they're re, um, being relocated to, uh, and that could cause additional harm. So um, I'm not sure. I do know that we have talked with the board in open session about drills and plans without giving specifics about what we're doing with our students during those drills. Mr. Torrey. Uh, I just want to speak briefly to the question of when policies were reviewed. It was definitely reviewed because we review our policies regularly, but without in front of me, I can't give you an actual date. So the lack of a response should not be taken as an indication that it hasn't been reviewed, just that we don't have a date to give you. I'm just within the last year. It wasn't, it wasn't within the last year, but within the last few. Mr. Perrin. Um, we do um, routinely work with our students and staff about how do we handle what's, what's called an enhanced lockdown procedure. That's done every year. And then 
you know, by, by state regulations, we actually drill six times a year, and we also do six evaluation drills. We also do parent outreach, and we did a parent, parent outreach, Mark, was that October? So we do a parent outreach where we actually invite parents to come in. We talked about the plan. We had members of BRAT PD. We had Mark was there. Um, Rescue was there. So we do offer those opportunities for parents to come and find out a little bit more. And we'll continue to do that. Thank you. Thank you. Any other business for under Article 7? Mr. Davis. Thank you. I'm Andy Davis from Brattleboro, and I'm a little nostalgic. I've tried to make <laughs> as many of these meetings over the years as I could have, and um, a lot of the articles that have been passed have the phrase, unless the board is dissolved. And I'm just looking ahead for that transition and thinking we have an eight-member board here that's been looking over the middle school, the career center, the high school, and we're looking at a transition to a nine-member board adding in schools in over four towns. And I know the whole situation is fluid with the legislature and the courts, but I just wanted to ask members of the board if anyone wants to uh, offer, what challenges and opportunities you see for that new board looking over a much larger kingdom, if you will, or queendom um, of four towns, pre-K to grade 12, early education, the high school, the middle school, the career center, and if you were going to be offering any insights to a member of that board um, in terms of challenges or opportunities that you see, if any of you would feel like offering your response to that question, I would find it really interesting. I'm currently running for Brattleboro Town School Board. Haven't thought about the emerged board at some point down the future in the future, but. I'm just curious, you've been on this board with this responsibility, or do you have any sort of reactions to that question? And is anyone here even remotely thinking of running for that merged board who would be willing to comment on that? So it's an open-ended question, but it has to do with, with the changes that are coming uh, upon us. Thank you, Mr. Thank Davis. You. The board's been queried. Yes, uh, Sean Murphy from Guilford. Um, it's an interesting question, Andy. Um, because I have been on this board for so many years, um, I have quite a bit of experience in working with different members from different towns. Um, and so, in a way, uh, the, the new unified union board would have a similar complexion to this board. Um, and there are a lot of unknowns uh, because it'll be very hard, I think, to determine how all the work that needs to be done is going to be done. Uh, but I have quite a good degree of confidence uh, that this board, you know, the new, not this board, but the Unified Union Board will be able to all work together to have a successful outcome to satisfy the law of the state of Vermont. So, you know, it, it is, there are a lot of unknowns, um, but my experience here gives me a certain amount of confidence that, um, you know, it, it'll, it'll work. Any further <laughs> comments from the board? Mr. Davidson. Um, Andy, I just wanted to say, too, that, um, as you said, the, the process is sort of fluid right now with legislature, the court system, who knows. But the plans going forward, um, two members of each one of the existing boards were part of a transitional <coughs> board, um, which will, I think, will help inform the new unified board in 
how things have gone, how, you know, and kind of answer some of those questions in more of a personalized kind of way, because the transitional board will be doing that to the new unified board, assuming everything goes as planned right now. So I think that a lot of that, those conversations will probably happen over time um, while we're doing that transition. Mr. Mills? Rick Mills from Dummerston. Uh, very concerned about the, uh, I guess there's 35 to 40 feeds into the community right now. Over the five towns, it's going to be reduced to that eight or nine that you spoke about. Uh, I guess if there was anything that I was going to speak to the upcoming board about, it would be to recruit strong uh, committees that are going to supplement this, this super board that's eventually going to be in place or is bound to be in place. So I, I think that public input, continued public input is, is critical. Uh, I've attended this budget meeting the last five years and, and the, uh, the attendance has been dismal. Um, I think it's time for the public to get involved. Otherwise, the people that make the decisions are going to make the decisions and we're going to stay with them. So uh, supplementing the board on committees on the issues that are important to them is, is, is critical. Thank you, Mr. Mills. Any further discussion from the board? Mr. Janice. <clears throat> yeah, <clears throat> thank you. Um, the, uh, I'm, I'm not the only one on this board that has served on uh, both the town boards and the, the high school board, and, and as well as the finance committee, WSASU finance committee. And um, uh, similar to what, what uh, Sean was saying, that the, the towns, you know, can work really well together. I think the transition to wherever we're going, uh, you know, it, it's been a little bit of, if that's not an understatement, of a rocky road. Um, and once we get past it, I have been impressed over my uh, year serving on boards about how involved and interested and supportive um, the communities are. And once we make that transition, uh, perhaps echoing Sean's view is that we can we can work together for for our students and and uh, on this board our students are all well I was going to say five towns four towns the SU is all five towns um, but uh, also uh, going along with what, what Rick was saying <clears throat> is that the issues that um, are faced by a town board are fairly different than the issues that are faced on the, the uh, BUHS number six board. That dealing with, with um, students and their needs of, you know, pre-K, I served on the, the policy council of EES, Head Start Early, Head Start, you know, the needs for preschool, the needs for, for elementary school that, that you're familiar with are, are a lot different than the needs uh, and development of what high school students are like or, or, or middle school students. And so there be a uh, there be need to be an education of the board to to, to broaden their focus, and I think the idea of, of relying on, on committees is is a good idea. So it's going to be a, a a challenge, but I've got some basic optimism that once we get through it all, that we'll we'll pull together and and just deal with whatever is. The structure that's that's imposed on us, and uh, so people just need to be flexible. Um, try to let bygones be bygones, and look forward to, to building a, a strong union. I mean, I, I've been impressed over the years at the supervisory union, you know, at all all the different levels of how how functional we are. Uh, at least I, I think we are, and uh, so I hope that that can continue in, in the new the new board. Thank you, Mr. Janice. Any further comments from the board? Mr. Woodworth. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Just very briefly, as someone who has uh, been involved for, I guess, 15 years now and about ready to ride off into the sunset, uh, I have a positive view. If, if this upcoming board works the way the high school board does, uh, it'll be successful. And as others have stated, where we have five towns where they never left a meeting in my 15 years where there was any animosity that Brattleboro was ganging up on the other towns or whatever. Uh, <clears throat> the other thing is we very effectively use committee system. 
most of our board meetings, and we can thank Ricky for part of it, are, are not long drawn out affairs. Work is done in, in committees. And, and with that in mind, I hope that, uh, that since there's a huge amount of information and a huge amount of things the new board is going to have to know that they utilize some sort of advisory or, or committees to help uh, ferret through all that information. So I, I'm, I think it's going to be great. I, uh, I trust the, I don't know exactly who's running, but I, I think there's some good folks that will step up to the plate and hope they're ready to work hard. Thank you, Mr. Woodworth. Any further comments from the board? Any further business under Article 7? I do currently sit on a town board as well as this board, so um, I have a very good sense of the difference. The one thing that I don't believe is that the bygones have gone by yet. If we are emerged, there will necessarily be conflict between funding for the different towns, which is entirely different than the English department versus the math department. Um, I believe that there are a lot of strong people on these SU boards and that we can work through it, but the bygones have not yet gone by. And this is all part of a much larger national issue involving public schools, but we don't have all night. So I can give you a lecture later if you really want. Um, but I do believe in these people and I do believe that we will make the best of what we are able to work with. I do not support merger, and if there's any way to stop it, I still will. And I say that as a person who is on a merged board and on a town board. I think we're just trading in one kind of inequity for another. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Beekman. Any further discussion from the board on this topic? Any other business? Mr. Tory? Um, you know, I guess uh, talking about this board and how it functions and if this uh, new board were to work like the high school board has, it might be a very good thing. But having served on the Act 46 study committee and seeing how badly a merged board can be run, um, I don't have a whole lot of hope for it. Thank you. Any further discussion from the board? Uh, Mr. Uh, Murphy. Well, I think your question uh, generated a lot of uh, opinions, so that's good. Um, one, of the things that, oops, excuse me. one of the things that I was, um, I wonder about is parental involvement. At the high school, you don't have a tremendous amount of parental involvement uh, directly to the board. Um, and obviously in an elementary situation that the parents are very much involved. So I think giving a bigger voice to parents, having a really receptive board um, to parents and to younger uh, students, I think is going to be extremely important uh, and somewhat challenging because of the size of the board. Uh, but there have been discussions about how that would be uh, ameliorated a little bit. Um, there would be meetings at the various towns, so the towns would each have an opportunity for parents to come, so they could meet in Putney, and Dummerston, Guilford, Brattleboro. Um, and there will be, on the transition board, there will be uh, 10 members, is that right? Yeah, and then on the regular unified union board, which I think is a good, terminology of unified union board. Um, there will be eight individuals, two from each one of the towns. Um, and I, I hope that there is uh, a good deal of participation in terms of people running for the board. Um, and, you know, we'll, it's, it's something that we do have to do. So hopefully it'll be successful, and I think it will be. So thank you. Thank you. Any further comments from the board? Any other business to be transacted under Article 7? 
Before I entertain a motion to adjourn, I believe we need to read the numbers for this evening. Do the clerks have the numbers? Here they come. The reading of the numbers, here we go. So for the town of Brattleboro, out of 9,226 registered voters, we had 19 in attendance this evening for 0.021% uh, of the registered voters. Dummerston has a total of 1,607 registered voters, seven in attendance tonight for 0.44%. Guilford has 1,733 registered voters. There were two in attendance tonight for 0.12%. Putney has 1,836 registered voters. Three were in attendance tonight for 0.16%. Uh, Out of a grand total of 14,402 registered voters with 31 in attendance for a percentage of 0.22%. I understand uh, Ms. Barton has a motion. Mr. If we could just wait till you get the microphone. You don't think I can yell loud? Oh, I know you can do it. <laughs> Ms. Barton. Mr. Moderator, Ruth Barton, proud resident of the great town of Dummerston. We won the <laughs> percentage pathetic as it is. <laughs> now I would like to make a motion to adjourn it appearing that we have completed the day's business. Thank you so much. Is there a second on the motion to adjourn? Second. The motions it's been moved and seconded to adjourn. All those in favor please say aye. 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 All those opposed please say nay. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it. I declare the meeting adjourned at 7.43 p.m. Thank you.